So in the last video we talked about um, finishing up the blog section and we got this featured post and then we've got our entire blog section here with an author and, and all that. Uh, one thing left off saying is the the navigation here. This could be something that an editor want to have control over. Obviously this is a really simple scenario here, but um, you know, navigation can be extremely complex and you can, uh, you might have a drop down for the blog and you only want to show, you know, a couple blogs here or you know, what, what have you. But, um, this is a, this is a section that is a little bit different from the way we edit the sort of meat of our site. Um, because when we think about headers, that's kind of that sort of like more metadata type stuff that maybe your editors don't need to see right away. Um, so there's a couple different ways to, to wire that stuff up. Um, but one of the big things is when you're working with Tina, especially when you're working with visual editing, um, anything you want to be editable is going to need to be after the use Tina hook. Um, because this data is what sort of gets hydrated as you're editing content through through things. Um, I've got a TypeScript error here. Uh, I'll have to fix that. With that being said, a lot of time in, in sort of a an app like this, you would have your header maybe being part of the layout and next. And that's really a lot of the ways this is designed. But with Tina, you, you tend to want to move those things down the stack a little bit so that they're behind um, the, the use Tina hook. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can compose that. Um, but this for the sake of this video, um, we're going to re be repeating ourselves a lot. We've got sort of this site header in all of our pages. Something we could also dry up there, but um, for simplicity, we'll just keep it, keep it like it is. So... Um, let's get right into it and let's design the configuration for our header. That's going to be a collection. Um, it's going to be a different collection here. Um, and so let's just do that. Uh, Tina doesn't have a concept of sort of like singleton collections, but uh, it is something that this is probably not something you'd want like, you know, more than one of. Uh, maybe in some scenarios you want multiple navigation, but um, we're just going to keep it simple and, and have one. Um, and we can talk a little bit about ways to, to make that a little more clear for your editors as well. So nav and nav. And I think I'm just going to really keep it brief here. And these are just going to be strings with, with links. Um, we can talk a little bit about what else we might be able to do there. But uh, So this is going to be links And that's going to be an object where list is true. And we have fields. Label, label. Um, in a lot of scenarios, you might actually want to make this a reference. So it would be kind of nice for, for instead of it to be a link, for it to just reference the page or the post. And that way you can kind of build your links on the back end. Um, we've shown how to work with references, so that might be something that you can do on your own as an exercise. Um, okay, so we've got this nav item. And uh, if we go into our, our um, admin, okay, so we're in the nav here. And um, we'll just create one nav. And that was home. Go here. Uh, whoops. Make one more. About. Oh, sorry, not about. Uh, blog. And that was, I think, just blog. Okay. And backwards here. And again, I, you know, you can use item props here. Actually, let's just do that real quick because that's pretty ugly. Copying it from, what was that? Copying it from our featured list here. Same same kind of story. Okay, that's better. Um, that's it. Let's leave it at that. So nav is a, um, we're going to kind of consider this a global collection. And what that means is when we're editing our post and we go into admin, we don't want to see the first form here 
ever be the the nav. We're basically saying that's just like sort of a secondary piece of content and we want it to sort of hide, be hidden away. Uh, the other thing is we don't want to create any new navs. We want to make that sort of locked down. Here. So in the in the collection, there's also a UI property. And that's going to be a little bit different than field level UI properties. Allowed actions, um, create false, and actually delete false. So that will just make it so that an editor can't come through here and click on, you know, the nav items. They're just going to go directly to the nav. Um, and that's basically our version of, it's kind of like a singleton concept. Um, the other thing is we're going to make this global true. Um, and that's going to, like I said, if, if an item is global, it's not going to show up as the first item when you're, when you're querying for it. So um, the other thing here is we haven't yet actually wired it up to, to be used. Let's do that real quick. And, um, oh, sorry, my resolution needs to probably be bumped up a bit. Um, yes, yeah, so if you weren't able to see that, this is a pretty simple setup. Uh, but, but mainly the UI, allowed actions, and global. That's, that's what we're using here. And then um, we're going to jump back into our page briefly, and we're going to talk about our query. Um, so on the home page, we've got this page query. And this page query is um, just going to get the page collection. There's a few that come out of the box. And as we talked about, you can do page connection. You can also do, um, as we just created, a nav. And you could do nav. Uh, so you could do things that this way. And you could actually pass down two query results. But one of the things that as you get into really building a site with Tina, a lot of the time you're not going to end up using this these auto-generated queries. You're just going to use sort of pieces on top of that. And I'll show you how to do that here. Uh, so uh, one of the things you can do is um, you can go into the Tina folder and you can add a queries folder. And in there, I'll just do um, main.gql. And in here, we can we can create whatever queries we want to create. Now, all the queries that we're using for the auto-generated client are already here. They're in the Tina generated folder, and they sort of appear and disappear as, as you go. Um, so we're going to take this query here, which is just the page query we're using, and we're going to copy it in here. I want to give it a name. And this is going to be the page and nav query. It's going to take the same exact arguments, and then it's going to use this fragment, which is the page parts uh, fragment. Um, so that's that's going to not give it, get us very far. But but quickly, just to see to show you, um, if we did that, we can automatically go in here. Now we see page and nav, and that's kind of nice because that's it's the same API, but it's basically you can you can then control. The query. So now we have full control over that query, and we can still lean into sort of the page parts. So the page parts is a fragment in the frags uh, GQL, GQL file. This does get updated. So if I updated, um, if I added a new block type, then I don't have to go and change my query. I'm just using the fragments, and the fragments get updated automatically. So it's a nice, a nice balance, a nice way to um, to kind of get the best of both worlds. This full level of control, and you could. Not even use this. You could use. You could write your own query here um, if you prefer. Um, but usually, what I do when I'm combining queries, I just go and find the other query. Let's see, nav. Um, now we're going to grab the the inner part here. We're going to just hard code this. So this is just going to be nav.md always um, for all of our page and nav or all of our sort of page level queries. We're just going to get them them here. And so we're just taking the nav. Uh, query that we found and hard coding it in here. Um, that way this is just going to move around and always get the same document. Relative path is still going to be the page. So um, that's up to you to decide how to build that. But for the most part, um, you know, this is kind of the pattern that we usually lean into. Uh, so I go back in here and page and nav now. If you go into the page component, um, I have this TypeScript there I got to fix, but nothing else is broken here. Um, because it's still using the same result. But this is actually no longer what we're doing. We've got a um, page and nav query now. Again, TypeScript is happy. It would be happy um, if, if I could fix that type. But um, now what we can do is we can actually pass a portion of this into the site header. And that's just going to be nav. So this is, this is here because we did a nav query and a page query. Um, and so it's, it's all ready to go. 
props are going to be page and nav query page. So let's just make sure that's happy. Oops, that's not right. Nav. Okay, so our types are happy. Uh, we've got this props now. And let's just loop through it and, and like I said, keep it really simple. Um, Props.links. And I think I actually just gave it the right links, which is good. Um, and then we should be able to see this, uh, make it editable. So if we look at our form here, uh, we don't see anything different. This is our page form. This is for the page home.md file. But if we go up higher, we can see, well, we can see the references that we made, which are found here. So there's a post and then there's a, an author on the post. Now that's not relevant for, for now, but we can see this content. And this is going to be in a global document. So that's from specifying UI global. You get it down here. You can click on this and you can edit it and things update accordingly. So this is the same same API, same patterns that you might have found in, in the other videos, but um, we're kind of hiding that form away because it's not something that we would consider to be, uh, you know, something you would use all the time. Uh, let's make it editable. Tina field and it's link. And I think I think I have a check at the links there. And if it is there, we can do maybe label. Um, great, so that's all editable. That's pretty easy. So um, now that site header has this props, the other pages are gonna be broken because we haven't updated our queries for them. Well, it's not broken, but it's uh, there's nothing there. Uh, so quickly, I'm just gonna go through and update our, our data here. This could be wrapped up into, you know, a, a custom component, but um, it's not all that valuable because the query is what we have, actually have to update. Um, so post query, I'm going to go and do the same thing. All right. Okay, so post and nav query now. Um, we will pass that in. So uh, this is at the component level. We haven't updated our query to actually use that yet, though. Um, post and nav. So result, passing that in, passing the blog page component, passing that through to the header. Um, this is the wrong page. That's not what we're working on right now. Okay, so we're good. This is working again on the blog page. Uh, again, uh, all, all you do here is you basically step through and update the queries. So we have this post and nav query. Now I've got one more query. This is the post connection query. This is going to be post connection and, and nav. Um, similar patterns here. And I'm going to grab the post connection, which is here. Copy that in as well, and then same thing. So again, using uh, the post parts, make sure that, that that will allow things to just sort of update automatically, which is nice. Um, so now I've got post and nav connection. Same story. Again, site header doesn't have that information. The, oh, post connection query. Okay, so going back into the blog index page. Okay, we're good to go. So that's sort of the story with, with global documents, um, documents that you want to sort of stay out of the way. Um, a lot of time, the header is a really good example, but you might have like a theme file as well, where you want to let your editors choose the colors or something like that. Going to be a similar story, um, making it global so it's not sort of in the way, uh, but at the same time, giving, giving your editors the ability to control it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. That's kind of all we're going to go through for building the site. Uh, so with, with that, this is a completely local build. There's no external database. There's not even a, there's not even a 
you know, local database running here. There's some embedded data, you know, doing work behind the scenes, but so far we haven't connected this to anything. Um, and what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to deploy it to Vercel. We're going to talk a little bit about um, checking your build, making sure things work. And you might be thinking, how does this data actually work if it's file based on a Next.js site, you know, on my server? And the reality there is that it, it doesn't use the file system when we're querying. So when I ran this query, um, you know, up here, the post nav connection, that's gonna that's actually just querying this um, the GraphQL API server that we run here. So if we did um, I'm in the wrong folder here. NPX TNCMS dev. So when I run this, uh, this is going to start up a localhost 4001 GraphQL API endpoint. So when we're going to deploy it, I'll talk about the next video. Um, that's going to use another service um, externally um, called Tina Cloud, and we'll get into that in the next one. Thanks.